Today, looking at the best smartphone gimbals for larger phones, and in particular, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This video is sponsored by Pond5. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun. If you follow my channel, you know that for larger phones, I typically like hybrid, what I call hybrid gimbals. However, smartphone gimbals are affordable, they're prevalent, and so I wanted to look at which ones work best with larger phones. Most of these gimbals are pretty lightweight and their payload capacities aren't great for larger phones, especially when you add accessories. And so that is what I'm focusing on today. Using a smartphone gimbal with a phone attached to it. This is a 13 Pro Max and an ND filter because I almost never just use a phone on a gimbal. I almost always use ND unless I'm shooting inside. And so to me, having a smartphone gimbal that you can't use at least an ND filter is not worth it. It just doesn't work. And so this is a clip-on ND from Sandmark. It's a great little filter. It also has polarizer built into it. And I'm going to use it without a case. Part of the reason I'm doing that is I don't have a case yet for this phone that works with lenses. Moment has been behind, I guess, because of these supply chain issues. Now, technically speaking, this would mimic adding an ND filter to this using, for example, the Moondog Labs filter mount, which is what I use often with a Moment style case. As a reminder, the 13 Pro Max weighs about 240 grams, and then this ND setup weighs about 29 grams. All right, so I'm taking my ND filter and I am putting it on the iPhone here. I'm shooting everything with the wide lens. And the first gimbal I'm looking at is the Zhiyun Smooth X. This is a two axis gimbal, and it is really ideal for travel. It has an extension rod, which is nice. I did review this. This gimbal is uh, maybe a couple years old, not quite a couple years old. Although I'm not covering every gimbal ever made because that would be insane. I am looking at a lot of the more popular options though. All right, there we go. That pulled it right up, no problem. The Smooth X has a payload capacity of 260 grams. And so this actually is above the recommended weight. However, it seems to hold it fine. I shot a couple of test shots. First one around my pool using the native camera app, which of course has great built-in stabilization. Did get a few flares using the clip-on ND. Nothing really fits the larger camera bump on the 13 Pro Max. And then the second shot here, I use cinematic mode, shot 30p, conformed it to 24p for subtle slow motion. And I'm walking backwards, filming my daughter in kind of a traditional Steadicam style shot. And this ground was very uneven, and I actually had to walk up a small hill. Okay, the next gimbal I have here is another one from Zhiyun, and that is the Smooth Q2. Now, I know they have a Smooth Q3 that has been released since this one. I didn't get that one. I like this one because of its metal body. The build quality is really good. The new Smooth Q3 looks like they went back to the plastic. I haven't used it, but this one is still a really nice option if you have it, and so I wanted to include it in this test. Because that's part of the idea of this test for me. It's if you already own these gimbals, do you need to buy a new one if you go with the larger phone? All right, there we go. The Smooth Q2 pulled it right up. The Smooth Q2 has a payload capacity of 260 grams. And so like the previous gimbal, this setup is a little bit over the weight, but it seems like it holds it no problem.
All right, next up here is the Moza Mini MX. And I actually never reviewed this gimbal on my channel. It didn't really interest me when it came out. I did pick one up though. And I've learned though since then that I do quite like this gimbal. It's got an interesting grip the way you hold it. And I found using it that it actually is a pretty nice little gimbal. The payload on this one is 280 grams. And so there you go. You pick that up and seems to be holding it just fine. Before we get to the next gimbal, I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Pond5. If you create YouTube videos, etc., then you've likely used stock footage. A lot of stock providers offer yearly subscriptions though, and that doesn't always work if you're just looking to make a one-off purchase. I often just need one clip, not 50, and that's an awesome benefit of Pond5. You can pay per item. And if you do prefer a membership, you can go that way too. Pond5 has the largest online collection of footage with over 30 million video clips, and all footage is yours to use anywhere for professional or personal projects across all platforms forever. In addition to video, Pond5 offers music, sound effects, photos, After Effects templates, and 3D models. So next time one of your projects needs stock media, check out Pond5. And if you use the link in the description, you can save 20% on your first purchase. Thank you Pond5 for sponsoring this video. All right, next up is a really cheap gimbal. And I say cheap, it's well made, but it's extremely affordable. I think this is like $39. All these other gimbals are so far between the range of 60 and 100 or so dollars. This one is super affordable. And when I reviewed it, and I still believe that, it is one of my favorite affordable, throw in your bag, travel gimbals. It has an extension stick, which is nice. And it has a built-in tripod, which I had never seen before. And I thought, why haven't I seen someone do that before? It's a great idea to have a built-in tripod. Now this gimbal holds 280 grams like the previous one, but it will grab it and hold it. It has a little bit of an issue with the 13 Pro Max here, I've found. You can see it kind of struggling a little bit there. But once you get it balanced, there you go. I had to push it closer to the filter. Now it's balanced and it's ready to go. Again, this is a super affordable gimbal. The fact that it'll even hold the 13 Pro Max with a ND filter on there is pretty cool. All right, next up is the Hohem iSteady V2. And this is another one of those gimbals that really surprised me. And the thing that I like the most about it, and I actually did review this on my channel, is it has this little AI sensor. And it's a hardware-based sensor that allows this gimbal to track you without an app. And so that means you can use any app like Filmic Pro, et cetera, that doesn't have tracking built in and track yourself, which is pretty cool. This gimbal also, holds 280 grams. And so it does work with these larger phones. It picked it right up. The Hohem is very compact, easy to travel with. And for smartphones, it's a surprisingly nice little gimbal.
All right, now I've got the DJI OM4. This is the SE. So it's actually a new gimbal. It came out around the same time as the OM5, which I do not have. The main difference between this gimbal and the OM5 is the OM5 has a extension rod, just like two of the other gimbals I showed previously. So I did not update to the OM5 because the OM4 pretty much is exactly the same. The payload capacity on this gimbal is 290 grams. So it is getting a little bit larger and the capacity is better for these heavier phones. Now I know these systems have magnets. With the magnet setup, you're not really attaching accessories. You're not really using any weight. And so I just use the clamp. I don't know if it's just the way I have this set up or what, but whenever I connect the DJI gimbal, it instantly goes into vertical shooting mode. So then I have to double tap here. And now it goes into horizontal shooting. I am not a huge fan of the DJI smartphone gimbals. I love DJI. I like their larger gimbals and I've used them for years. And these gimbals are fine, but I kind of feel like they're overpriced for what you get, especially when you compare them to the other ones I've looked at so far. Don't get me wrong, DJI are great, but there's better options if you're looking to save money. All right, and the last smartphone only gimbal I'm looking at today is the updated version of the Smooth 4. This is the Smooth 5 from Zhiyun. I was a big fan of the Smooth 4. The problem with that gimbal is the payload capacity was only 220 grams. And so as phones have gotten bigger, that gimbal, you just really couldn't use it anymore. This new Smooth 5 has a payload capacity of 300 grams. And so out of the ones I've looked at today, this one has the largest capacity. This gimbal sets up like a more traditional gimbal too, and I do like that. It has the, the arm that you can slide in and out and get it balanced before you even shoot with it. And then the motors will pick this up no problem. There we go, we're set up. I will be doing a full video on this gimbal in the near future, and so look for that in the coming weeks. And just to compare, here are the same two shots I've been showing, the pool and the park, but no gimbal. Shot handheld with the native camera app. So this is definitely bumpier and kind of swimmy compared to using the gimbal. But I have to say, it's not bad. Surprisingly good, actually, considering this is handheld but the gimbals are smoother. Now this shot did surprisingly well handheld. Cinematic mode has some mojo stabilization magic going on too. The only weird thing is it did lose focus tracking a couple times. The phone is moving around a lot more than it appears and so I guess that was somewhat problematic. But overall, pretty solid. Technically, any of these gimbals will work with this setup, the iPhone and the ND filter. However, if I was buying something new, I would stick with the Smooth 5 or probably the DJI 
and potentially the Hohem. The other ones, if you already own them and you want to use them with a larger phone, then I think they work okay. I would probably avoid the Nano SE, the Moza. It's not designed for bigger phones, but if you already have it, you could try it. This one gave me the most trouble. The Smooth X wouldn't get that one either. Obvious thing to say really, but again, if you already have them, they will work in quotes. The Smooth Q2 actually held up much better than I thought it would. The Moza Mini MX, it did okay. It caused me a couple little bumps that I didn't expect. And so I probably wouldn't use this one, especially new, but if you have it, then you could of course use it. Ultimately, what this proves to me though, is how good the stabilization is on the actual iPhone. Shooting with the native app in particular, using a gimbal, you can get remarkably stable shots. And then it just depends on what accessories you wanna add. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, if I'm using a larger phone and I'm adding ND or using lenses in particular, like from Moment, et cetera, then I'm using a larger gimbal that's probably designed more for traditional cameras. I call them hybrid gimbals. And I'm gonna do an updated video to the one I did last year for the 13 Pro Max. And so look for that coming in the near future. Remember, if you have a smaller phone, all these gimbals will work fine. This video was about the max size phones. So do you have a larger phone? And if so, do you use a smartphone gimbal or a traditional bigger gimbal? Let me know in the comments below.